Hey everybody, welcome to our Sunday afternoon Facebook Live. I'm coming to you with uh, wet hair. I was in a bit of a, a flurry to get things ready today. Um, today marks the end of our fall break and um, my son is quite heartbroken to learn that he actually has to go back to school tomorrow. And I share a little bit of that sentiment with him. It's been nice to not have to do a drop off anywhere. Um, I didn't get to sleep in, but you know, just not having to drop off is kind of nice. Um, I have three projects to show you today, so I'm going to jump in pretty quickly. Um, I have classes this week. Uh, Pigment Sprinkles is on Tuesday afternoon. My monthly card class is Thursday afternoon. Um, Saturday, starting at noon, those classes repeat. Pigment Sprinkles at 10 and then the monthly card class at noon, I believe it is. Um, those events are on my Facebook page as well as my demonstrator website. And so this michellesalcho.stanfordup.net, that is where you can find my calendar, which has my schedule of events there. Um, it's a new format for us, and so I'm gradually getting it all updated. Um, but I should have um, you know, a month. Um, I need to get November published. Let's just say that. Um, last week I sent out the newsletter as well with those dates published. Um, so I have been making Halloween cards. La um, last week was, remember last Saturday was National Card Making Day and then we had a week of world card sending. Yeah, world sending card week. I think that's how the hashtag went. And I sent out 40 cards. Most of them were Halloween cards. I've had a ball using the Monsters, Monster Bash Suite and um, the Wicked stamp set, the Monster Bash, yeah, wonderfully, so wonderfully Wicked, um, the Monster Bash is probably not what it goes with it, and um, the Boo to You. So those are fun, and I hope that some of you are going to get those cards in the mail. I didn't get photos, so please take a photo and tag me in it if you get a card and, um, and you love it. And what else do we have? Um, so the cards I have today, these are kind of fun because two of them are uh, different, are a technique that can be done across many different themes, which a lot of card uh, techniques probably can be, but these were pretty obvious even to me. So um, I hope you're going to like those. I'm excited about them. One of them is this cute little this cute little Halloween card, right? So you're going to mail it flat like this, and then it opens, and it's going to stand up like a little easel, and it says, Happy Halloween. Isn't that the cutest thing? So we're going to make this today um, in a Halloween. We're going to repeat this same one because I need another Halloween card. Um, but And we're going to follow this format in um, my classes this month. So if you come to class, you're going to get lots of practice with this format. I think it's too fun. Um, and then we're going to make this card. Okay, this card is very Christmas. We're actually going to make a birthday version of it today. And then the other card I have, we're just going to do it exactly the way we're going to do it in class. So let me see if I can get the camera in the right place coming down. And I'll show you the cards that we have. Let me make this a little bit bigger. So maybe you're not looking at quite so much of my mess. So Friday night was um, a team night event here at my home, and my team members were able to come over and craft from uh, about 3 o'clock in the afternoon um, till we kept going till about 1 a.m., which I know. Any of you that know me are going, what? No, she did not. Well, I did. Um, I really did. So, <laughs> um, but anyway, some people wanted to come up and see my space. And so Gail came up and she sat, she pointed to the area where I actually work during the day and she said, oh, is this where you do your, your Facebook Lives? And I said, oh, no, 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 this is the space that I do over here in, in this area. And um, she's like, really? And I said, I know, it's really hard to believe, but I clean off this much of the space and that's what you see in the videos. So um, it was a much bigger mess on Friday night. And then I crafted all day yesterday. So... We just keep turning it into a mess and then cleaning it up and starting all over. I do have the host code up here and then as well as showing on the screen. 
If you place a $30 order by Thursday of this week and you use this host code, I will send you the supplies to make all three cards that we're going to do today. One version or another. Can't promise you it's going to be Halloween or birthday, but you'll have supplies to make three cards um, of the style that we're doing. Okay, so let me jump in with the card that is kind of a standalone, if you will. Um, I am Cindy is the first name of the demonstrator that I saw this card from, and. Oh, actually, while I'm getting this together, I should show you. This is the fourth card. This is the other card that we're going to make in card class on Thursday. We're not doing that in the demonstration today, but this is um, number four. Okay, so I need these little Cajun Craze stems. Well, I'm only going to use one. And then I need a white liner for the inside. And then a piece of designer series paper from Gather Together. Then this is a piece of pear pizzazz. And then the card base is Pretty Peacock. I've already cut and scored my card base. All right, so I'm going to set that over here for just a moment. This piece I'm going to stamp and then um, and then I'm going to emboss it in the subtle um, darn it. The subtle, I'll get it out in a few minutes, um, the subtle embossing folder. Now I have the punch out. Even though I've already punched this, I'm going to stamp on top of it. So I'm going to create a template and use the Stamparatus to um, stamp on top of that. But I am pulling out a stamp set from a year ago called Country Home. And we're going to use the Simply Thankful for All Good Things. And then this little, this little guy right here. So I need use a D block and an E block. Gosh, and you can see this was a pretty well-loved stamp set. So I need Simply Thankful, put that there, and then I need this. I hope I actually am broadcasting. I didn't look at that yet. And I am going to stamp this in um, Pretty Peacock, both pieces. Grab that. I moved my inks this week because the sunlight that they were getting in the other spot was really fading my labels and it bothered me. So it was either order new inks because my labels had faded or just move them. All right, so I think I'm still in camera. So I want to put this in, sort of in this lower right hand corner. Pretty peacock. Now remember, the ink pads are really squishy, so we kiss them. We don't make out with them. We just lightly tap, and I can see that I've got pretty good coverage. I do have a silicone mat underneath because this is a photopolymer stamp. It doesn't have any cushion, so that um, silicone mat gives it some cushion to give me that great coverage. Now, I'm going to lay this in place. Um, and I, uh, I want this to be pretty much on top. So I'm going to put this right there. Now, I'm going to leave that in place to help me know where to place it. I want it. Right there. Okay. So that looks pretty good to me. Let's just clean these up. I kind of made out a little bit with that one, didn't I? Got a little messy. So I think I told you this is pear pizzazz that I'm stamping on with Pretty Peacock ink. And then I've got a strip of Mary Merlot and a strip of the um, designer series paper. So this is 
an inch by four, and then this is gonna be an inch and a quarter by four inches. Oh, I'm gonna need that for something else. And I think I am finished with these. Let me just get them out of the way. So, did any of you get any cards sent out this week? For World Card Sending Week. Alright, so that stamp set is in the annual catalog, in case you're wondering. I'm going to go ahead and, and adhere these two together. And I, so this part is where I stamped. I turned it kind of upside down and used it as a mask. So now I've got some friends in Michigan who just finished up a retreat today and are headed home. Uh, it's a retreat that I I went I went to this retreat every every six months for several years. And then now that we're hosting our own retreats, I haven't been back as much. All right, so let's put this over here and let me show you why I needed this um, punch out if I've already punched. All right, so the stamps that we're going to do for this one is the Harvest, Harvest Hello, which is right here. So it is um, Harvest Hellos. And we need this, and then we're going to use we're going to use this leaf. All right, so I need, need that, and then I'm going to use this leaf. I think that's it. But I've already punched them out, and to line it up would be pretty tricky. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to punch this, put this in to my punch, and make. A template. Then I need this apparatus and I'm going to get a piece of the grid paper that goes with it. So I like this little grid paper. It fits perfectly. I only need one magnet. I'm put my grid paper down. And I'm going to put my template. And that probably doesn't make it matter as long as my stamp is symmetrical. But, okay, so then my apple is Cajun Grays. That's my template apple. And, oh, I don't know why I put it on a block. So I'm going to use the Stamparatus. So I am going to put my Cajun Craze piece in here like a puzzle. Let me make sure y'all can see that. So I need to line it up good. And then I've got that paper underneath so that I can test it. So I'll go ahead and grab the Cajun Craze ink. Stamp it down. Well, that is just about perfect. Maybe not, you know, quite as perfect as it could be. So I'll move. This does happen sometimes. I need to make an angle. Okay. Word to the wise, leave a quarter of an inch up there so that when you need to shift it, it's easier for me to shift the puzzle base than it is to keep moving around the stamp. Okay. So now I'll put my little apple in here. It fits just perfect. And I'll ink this up and bring it over. I'm a little concerned that I'm not seeing any comments, so I'm just going to jump over to Facebook and make sure that I am on. And I am. Okay. Good deal. 
All right. So that's pretty awesome. Now I need this little stem. Oh, boogers, have I got this upside down? Well, we'll know in a second. Okay. Oh, I do. Okay. So I've got my um, I've got my mask upside down, if you will. So I need to turn it over so that I can punch the stem, stamp the stem. And unfortunately, now I need to go this way. Okay, that needs to stay there because that's the way the stamp is lined up. Okay, that should be pretty good. I hope I did this right. Yep. Okay. Come on. Something's a little. Oh boy, that's way off. What on earth have I done? All right, you know what? We're going to go with this little sucker not even being stamped. Well, maybe we'll ink it up here and we'll take the, pa the paper to it. Let's see how that works. Okay, now I've inked up that really thing. Okay, keeping it real, you know. Live TV, as they say. I'm all about getting inky, but I don't have to be foolish about it. Okay, try this again. I'm going to ink up this tiny little, little stem. And I probably just put my head all in it. Let's see. I don't think I did too badly. Okay, let me see. I can live with that. All right, let's put him over there and not lose him. And we'll get this out of the way. Now, this is a, a chamois that I just cut into four pieces. It's easier to clean the Stamparatus up um, using a piece of the chamois rather than the entire chamois. All right. So that goes there. And that goes there. If you aren't sure what this is in the bottom of my case, um, let me know so that I can show you what I've done and why. Because it's quite, it's quite handy. Okay, this one. All right, but we do need this little leaf, and we're going to come back with a pretty peacock and all right, I've got some scrap peacock. What happened to it? Oh, now this is aggravating. This is what I get because I lost my phone right before I turned the camera on. Right, that's just the way it happens. So it stands to reason that I would lose my peacock scraps too. Seriously, they were right here. Well, as soon as I turn the camera off, I'll find it, right? You can see it at my feet. Man, oh man. That is aggravating. And now I've just shuffled everything over here on my right, so I'm telling what I'm going to have. Okay, I guess this becomes a scrap now. 
I need three little pumpkins. Not three little pumpkins, three little leaves. And these do not have a punch, so they will have to be pussy cut. I said that bad word. It's not really such a bad word. But if you're in a hurry, it can be an aggravation. Now, I've just ordered something. Let's take a look. So I just ordered this every so to every season on page 51 this leaf has a punch so if this were here I could just easily substitute that stamp and punch for the one I'm working with right now and then I wouldn't have to fussy cut I would just punch them out just like I did the pumpkin and the stem And of course you could always, well, no, that would not work. Never mind. For the stem, I could go with the unstamped look. But, all right, so what else do I need to tell you? Oh, I am. So team night, team night, we really did have a lot of fun. We played bingo, which was great fun. We had um, a member of our team that lives in Rhode Island, so she's far away. So she played bingo with us by proxy, and she won the prize, which is a great was a great host set from the holiday catalog. It has a lot of Christmas greetings in it. In fact, I think I might be using that on one of the cards. I think we are the Christmas version of that gift stacked present card uses I used one of those stamps on the inside okay I am not precisely fussy cutting because I need to stick my head in the camera in order to do a better job and So since this card is on you know, pretty peacock, of course, you need the liner in white for the inside. And then you could stamp something on the inside, too. Kind of gotten into that. I left my insides blank for a long time. And now I'm stamping more and more on the inside as well as the envelopes, which helps me in two ways. One it helps me get an envelope with the stamped card so that I don't have to have that extra step of marrying up the card and the envelope later on. That's one of the reasons I end up with so many cards that are just hanging around everywhere. All right, let's get that out of the way. And I think that we're ready to assemble. All right, so we put these two together. Let's put this one in place. Move that over there glue. You're like a surgeon barking out orders. Glue. I've got a little ink on me anyway. Alright. So I'm going to cover up that space there. I'll put this little apple up on dimensionals. Let's see if I've got some Okay. Looks like I'm a little low on dimensionals here. so that it comes in about there. And then I'm going to tuck this one here. Oh, I forgot 
Oh, dad gum. Okay, I forgot to run this through the subtle embossing folder, which would give this a little darn it. Well, shoot. It is what it is. But actually, I should kind of cut off these little pieces. That would have made it much easier to fussy cut them also. And now this is on a dimensional tiny tiny. It would be easier to put the, a little dot of glue and stick it to the underside of the pumpkin than it will to cut a dimensional small enough. So as I say that, right, and then this little thing here. So anyway, the because I stamped on it, I needed to stamp first and then run it through the embossing folder. And I don't do that very often. And that, I think, is the reason I'm going to say I forgot. But how cute is this? All right. And this just gets glued. Right here. So if you're watching the replay, I'll still get your comments and we'll come back and answer any questions that you have. And I admit I am not the best at getting the supply list and dimensions posted for our projects. I really am trying to work on that. But if you place, remember if you place a $30 order between Sunday and Thursday of this week, and use this host code that's both on the screen and on my mat, then I will send you the supplies to make three of the cards today. Um, so simply thankful for all the good things is on the outside of our card. And then I threw the stamp set over here. Um, happy harvest blessings. Why not? And just to be different, I'm just going to come down here to the corner. Put that there. For no other reason than it's just different. It's not what you would expect. I don't need to get that ink everywhere. I'm going to do this down. Okay, so in card class on Thursday, you'll make two of these. I'll do all the hard work. You just come and have fun. That's what my magnet is. Okay, so that is card number one. And get this out of the way. And we will move on, I think, to the little Halloween card. Clean off a square foot of your desk. You need all of the space you can get 
ash cream. So, this little card is so cute. And we're not going to make the Halloween version in um, the class on Thursday. We'll make something different. But I needed another Halloween card. So that is why we are making it today. And it's really, it's so much easier than you think it is. And it folds flat to mail and then it stands out as a little decoration. So we just start, I've got a piece of basic gray card base, just like you're used to seeing. My daughter is calling. Hopefully that's going to find itself again. Hey, Pam. All right, looks like I'm frozen. Come on. Dad, come it. Okay, so that phone call interrupted my broadcast. Good times. Um, and it is not coming back. Maybe it is. Dad gummit. That is so frustrating. Well, I don't know what to do. You need to see the down. So I think that I have to end this, or at least end the Epic Cam and bring it back in. All right. So I think that will stay there on me while I try and do this again. Yeah, I'm sure she can hear me, but uh, the down camera got lost when the phone call came in. the love. Okay. All right. Let's see if I do. Come on. <laughs> Technology. Okay, well, you're a little farther away than I wanted you to be, but at least it's showing, so we're going to go with it. Okay, so normal card base here, right? Um, we are going to cut one and a half inch on the one and a half inches in on this side and one and a half inches on this side, and we're going to go all the way to the score line. So let me show you how that looks. So I've got the trimmer. I actually have the new trimmer. And I'm going to put my cutting blade here. I'm going to put my card down. So I've got one and a half here. And I'm going to take it all the way to my score line. And this trimmer is so awesome. It has a little line here so that I can actually see when my blade hits that line. Okay, then I need to do one and a half this way and, and I know that now I've got one and a half over on this side. So I'll do the same thing and come up. All right, so this is a big piece of basic gray cardstock. Now I'm going to score this part in half. So this is four and a quarter, right? Four and a quarter inches this way. So I'm going to score it in the middle at two and a quarter. So let me see. Actually, not two and a quarter, two and an eighth. All right, so I'm going to come over to my cut line. Okay and I'm going to score between those two cut lines. All right, and now I have 
that scored. So now it looks like this, all right? I've got these two flaps and then this one that is scored in the middle. Now, I need designer series paper to go here, 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 and here. So I cut a piece of designer series paper the same size as my card front to start with, right? So on this side, so this is one, that card, here, that, darn it, that's one and a half inches over there. So I'm going to take this in just an eighth of an inch, right? So that is what, one and three eighths, right? No, one and one, two, three, yes, one and three eighths. And then I'm going to take this down to four and an eighth. Okay. And now that will fit here. Okay. And then I need to do the same on the other side. And let me make sure I got my little. Maybe right. Okay, so then I'm going to come over here and take off so one and a half, just an eighth of an inch shorter than that, and I'll take an eighth of an inch off of the bottom of it. Okay. Now that just leaves me the piece in the middle. That piece in the middle is two and a half inches wide, right? And I've got two and three quarters here. So, is that right? Yeah. Two and a half. Two and a half and three is five and a half. Yes. So I need this to be just one eighth of an inch less width, right? And then I've got. I need two two inch pieces here. Remember I scored at the two and an eighth. So I need it. Oh my gosh. Oh that's right. I did need to cut it. Okay. So two inches there. And then two inches here. And now I have all of that. I'm gonna put the trimmer away so that you can see how that lays out. Okay, and I think that's all the cut pieces I need to do. I am going to put down a liner of basic gray. Okay. So this is five and a quarter by four. Okay, and of all the crazy things, I'm going to actually glue these outer flaps down too. Let me see. All right, then I can glue down. So this is part of the paper from the Monster Bash Suite that's in the holiday catalog. I've gone through two packs of this paper. I love it. I mean, this does not even, I mean, this is not screaming Halloween on this side. But it sure is pretty. Okay. So I made a pretty narrow border there. I can put these two down. So, um, the pigment sprinkles class that's this week. This wraps up the series. This is the third month of the series. And then I'm going to do some specialty classes to finish out the year, some special projects. I'm going to do the Advent Countdown um, one month. I'll do a Christmas Stampa Stack 
one month and Christmas tags one month and then starting January I'll do a series of beginner classes okay now to stamp this little cat oh I forgot to punch me a spider ah a spider in there no I don't okay um, actually, it's not punching a spider. It's running a spider through the big shot. Where are you? Okay. Getting my dies too. Okay, so what I need. Not any of these. Should be right. Oh, there it is. Okay. So here's the little spider. I actually have two different. So this is the tags, tags, tags um, framelits that go in that bundle, and this is the Wicked here. I'm going to get this little spider out of the Wicked. And I'm just going to cheat and take it right out of the black um, circle. So give me just a second. And we don't have an update yet on our um, die cutting and embossing machine. So if you're waiting on that, the trimmer is available. Trixie the trimmer, I just showed you her. I'm going to stamp on this white and stamp on this one. So I'm going to do this little spider web first. And I'm going to do him in Smoky Slate, which is out on the counter. Okay. Let's take ink on my fingers. There's that little spider web. And then I am going to do this adorable little cat in black, memento black. And I want her, I really want her down at the bottom of your. There she is off of that. So I'm gonna put the spider on that. Then we're gonna stamp Happy Halloween in pumpkin pie on this label that I punched out. So this label is um, this label punch here. My circles are about two and a half inches and then two and a quarter inches. And dadgum, I just realized I did what I wasn't going to do this time around. It's going to add my ribbon before I glued that down. So there is my label. So all of that is from the Wonderfully Wicked stamp set. Here's the Happy Halloween and the spider web and the little cat. And then the framelits that go with it are the ones that spell out wicked and have the little spider. Okay, so I am going to cut this in half and create a border. Kind of a mat for this. So I'm going to put a little glue over here, a little glue over here, set that one there for a second. Because the white and the black punched out are the exact same size. So to make it a mat, I need to offset it just a little bit.
and it takes just a second to set. While that's setting, I'll put these two together. And I'll put the little spider down. And I could have used a little glue dot on him. He's headed to visit that cat. And I'm going to add a little ribbon to this. And what I intended to do was a cheater bow. And I failed to do that. So I'm going to go all the way around. And just tie a knot on the very edge here. And I am using the ribbon. And he wants to my dad down. Definitely should have done a cheater bow so that you all didn't have to watch me stumble with this knot. Okay. And then the ribbon scissors are out. There they are. So I'm just going to cut that ragged edge off, edge, edge off there. Okay, and then I'll put my cat down with some dimensionals. And I'm actually going to take the edge of the circle right to the edge of the card. And so I'm going to put some dimensionals around this. And I don't want it to go anywhere. Okay. Since it had to hang off, it seemed to be easier to do it on the card itself than on the circle, which normally I wouldn't do that. Okay, and I want the cat's little bottom to be the bottom. So there, like that. Now I need this piece to stand up. So I'm going to put dimensionals on the back of it as well. And it needs to be a bit sturdy too. So. Well, I don't know how I did that. I managed to stick the back. Okay. There we go. Now I'll put this just leaving the narrowest edge of the smoky slate showing. And then the little guy stands up just like that. So how cute, right? So it'll go in your envelope just like that. And then it'll pop up like an easel for display. So I love it. And you can see, you could do this with any paper, lots of different. I think Rhonda Wade showed this with a little Christmas moose last week. So that's that one. And gosh, how long have I been going? I don't know. Okay, so the last card um, to show you today is this with the Christmas presents. Isn't this adorable? And how cute. It's just paper that's cut and stacked. I did this on the inside. And now we're going to do a birthday version. So I have a real red card base. And because it's dark, I've got a white insert for it. Then I have a piece of crushed curry layer and a white layer. So this crushed curry layer is four and an eighth by five and three eighths, and then the white is going to be five and a quarter by four. 
And then these little pieces are, turn this upside down so you can kind of zoom in. Um, this largest one is two by three. And then this one is one and a half by two and a half. And then this one is one by two. And we'll just start stacking them up. And I thought I got a little close on the last one. I went almost an inch, I mean half an inch up. And then it seemed like that bow was really near the top. So I don't know that I'm gonna go quite so high this time. This paper is from the Silhouette Scenes. This is in the annual catalog, the big catalog. And I'm only going up about a quarter of an inch this time. And hopefully it's straight. Yep, that's pretty straight. It's just a little over a quarter of an inch. And then I'm just going to stack these up. No dimensionals. So, you know, coordinating papers. The Christmas one uh, is actually the reverse side. The stripes or the gingham is red on one side and green on the other. And then this is, which one is this the other side of? Okay. So that's that. Then we'll need the Crush Curry Seam Binding Ribbon. This is one of my favorite ribbons. And we need four and a half inches of it. And I'm going to go ahead and cut that. You could do a little, you know, cheater edge on either end. And the top really won't, you can kind of hide it with the bow. The bow is separate. And I am going to grab glue dots to put these down. And... I want, I want it to show on each one, so I'm going to start at kind of one inch in, right, which is going to line up right there. So I'll see if I can't just add blue dots along the path. Then we'll just tie a bow. This ribbon that makes really makes bow tying very easy. Some of the you know, that are nervous about bows. This is an easy one. the birthday. Now we need a birthday greeting. I didn't let's see if I've got something here. I've got happy birthday right there. Maybe we'll just use it. This is a stamp set that is in the annual catalog. This happy birthday. And I think uh, we'll do this in real red. Okay. 
it like that. And then I want to tuck that Alright, to take another glue dot Ooh, at the end of my glue dots. It's the last one on that roll. And I'm just going to tuck that. When I had it, I had that just a second ago. That looks so cute. That was part of that. And then we just put it together. And we could use that same stack of presents that I used on the Christmas card on the inside. There's nothing about it that screams Christmas. It's just three presents in a bow. And that is from the wonderful Time Medley. It's such a pretty medley. It includes the stamp set, beautiful paper, die cut stickers, um, framelits. Okay. So let me clean these stamps a little bit so that I can get that done. So I have some free. Tell me that that goes with a different. Really, I just need two. One for the presents and one for the bow. Mm -hmm. So here it is. It's the most wonderful time. This is in the holiday catalog. So here are the little presents. And then... bows. So there are three presents and three bows all at once. So I cleaned off my space and I still filled it up. So we will make a version of this card at the Christmas class and the All Occasion class. So the all occasion class, the monthly card class on this Thursday, we'll make a version of this card. And to be precise, I should probably use the Stamparatus to do this, but I think I can get this close enough. So there we have it. Red presents, crushed curry bow, and a happy birthday card as well. So I hope that you've liked the projects today. Um, I appreciate it when you like and share my videos. I appreciate your, your business and your support. Here are the two present cards, if you will. One birthday, one Christmas. Here's the Halloween card that we made. And then we made the Simply Thankful. That's a Thursday card.
card as well. And the fourth card is hiding over here somewhere. So, thanks everybody for being here today. I um, hope you've had a good time. I appreciate you um, appreciate you watching. And don't forget if you um, like and oh, sorry if you place a thirty dollar order using that host code that is visible there, um, I will send you the supplies to make these three cards in the mail. So. Thanks, everybody. Have a great Sunday and a happy week. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.